So day one here at the Badminton World Championships with three matches in what a performance that was from Rupinen and Hockstrom in the mixed doubles. A shame for this home crowd for Martin Campbell and Julia McPherson falling in round one. But it was a great match for them. I'm sure they'll look back on that with kind eyes and they'll learn a lot from it. We've got men's singles up next for you. Wong Wing Key of Hong Kong, the number 12 seed, Vincent to his friends. He's up against, from Egypt, Ahmed Salah. So a quick look at the men's singles draw. Well, at least part of our draw, of course, a draw of 64 players in the World Championships in the men's singles. We might just see one of these progress through to a potential round three matchup against China's number four seed, Shi Yuki, if things go to plan for him this week. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Day one, match one for men's singles. It's Wong Wing Ki against Ahmed Salah. So Ahmed Salah from Egypt wins the toss of the coin. He elects to serve, and it's going to be Wong Wing Ki in yellow from Hong Kong starting the match. At the far end of the court, the top of your screens, this 27-year-old from the city of Hong Kong, currently ranked number 14 in the world. He's the number 12 seed here at the World Championships. He was up into the top 10 in the world just about a couple of months back, end of May, after a terrific run throughout the early part of 2017 and even the back end of last year. Some great performances in Super Series events. We can talk a little more about that later, but for the time being, we're going to take a look also at his opponent here today, Ahmed Salah from Egypt. He plays a bit of mixed doubles, a bit of men's doubles, and here in the men's singles, this 26-year-old from Cairo. 140th in the world. Pretty much his career high. That ranking of 138 was only last week. And it's going to be a very different proposition here for Ahmed Salah in the men's singles today. There's our umpire for today, Mr. Barry McNabb from Scotland supported by his service judge from Australia. Mr. Hua going to be looking after any errors and faults from the serve. So, Bookie's favourite, Sten Steen, this match, on paper at least, should be very one-sided. Wong Wing Ki from Hong Kong, top ten player in the world at his best. What do you do today if you are Ahmed Salah? Um, <laughs> you, you take a look around in the Emirates Arena and uh, enjoy the World Championship, enjoy the experience and, and do as well as you possibly can. And you give everything you've got so that um, when you leave this match, you don't leave anything behind on court. And uh, if there's some scratches on the knees because of you diving, then that's OK. Wong Ki Vincent, Hong Kong, China. Amit Sal to serve. Love all. Please. So Ahmed Salah from Egypt in that dark-coloured kit. 
bottom of the screen there nearest us. And he's up against Wong Wing Ki or Vincent, as he's known to his friends from Hong Kong in the yellow. And I agree wholeheartedly, Steen. He just has to give it his everything. He's at the World Championships and he's from Egypt. That's not very often we get to say that. The most fascinating thing I found out about this guy is that his ranking in mixed doubles and men's doubles far supersedes his ranking in men's singles. And yet here he is representing Egypt in the men's singles at the World Championships. It's also, I haven't looked that much into it, Bobby, but I think it's also a little bit about uh, how many competitors are there in um, the singles categories compared to the doubles uh, categories. Um, so I think it, if, if you're a little bit lower ranked, then you, you might actually quite easily be higher in the doubles categories than in the singles. Uh, yes, of course. But, but, um, One, two. The, he was the runner-up in the... Um, African Championships uh, this year, Sara, so um, it's definitely a good result. But of course, doesn't have the international experience, the Super Series experience, um, like uh, three, one. one win keep. Yeah, fairly easy decision for Wong Wing Ki to leave that to four long of the back line. Yeah, but absolutely what he might lack in experience and perhaps opportunities to play in these kind of environments. He very much is the underdog and he can afford to play like one and enjoy it. Yeah, great clip round the head from Wong Wing Ki. That stick smash. Yeah, Four, two. Of course, this um, there should be, in my opinion, differences in in the in the speed and the pace of the two players. But um, one of the things that I, I think already now we can see is the um, Five, very two. nice technical skills of uh, Ahmed Salah and. And, and think about what, what if what if these two have changed um, sort of um, uh, geographical Six, locations? Two. What if if uh, Salah had uh, been living in uh, Hong Kong, born in Hong Kong, in the hotbed of um, talent development there, and in, in just um, as, uh, what what would have happened had um, Wong Wen Ki been born in Egypt, where badminton is. Um, not such a high-profile sport as is the case in, in Hong Kong. Seven, seven, so it's a little bit about what, what kind of chances have you had in, in your um, youth to, to develop your game. That one's a little bit wide from Salah. Yeah, absolutely, Steen. I think um, from a player from an African nation to get this far, and like you say, he's showing us some nice technical skills at this stage. He doesn't look out of place out there at the moment. Well, Wong Wing Ki getting away with that body defence. He wasn't even looking, he turned his back and just tried to get a racket to the shuttle. Unfortunately for him, it clawed its way over the net, taking Salah by surprise. Wong Wing Ki... I think he's probably in about second gear at the moment. He's just cruising around the court and enjoying himself, unfazed by the challenge by the opponent. But we can see that if he chose to, he's got another couple of gears at least to step up into. Yeah, lost um, 
First round in his last three tournaments, uh, one key, but uh, he, uh, in Indonesia Open, Indonesia Premier, he lost the first round to Srikant Kidambi, 21-18 in the third game, and as we know, Srikant went on to win that tournament, so uh, definitely goes for a high um, competition level on uh, Wong Winky's side. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see that man, Srikant Kidambi, in a couple of matches. Time here out on court number one, live for you, match number six. In the meantime, this man, Wong Winky, looking very calm, confident, looking collected. And he's not even into third or fourth gear yet. I would say he's got that lead of 11-6. Well, the Egyptian coaching staff certainly with enough focus, detailed instructions as to how to get their man into this match. This next doubles partner, Minal Tanani, has been on court here in uh, Glasgow. She struggled a bit in Boston. Straight games in her first match. BWF doing a lot to um, develop badminton sport in uh, all kinds of parts of the world Africa, South America, with their shuttle time program. That's, that's magnificent. Yeah, absolutely. I've been involved in the shuttle time program a little myself, actually, um, with how to coach and how to train the trainers. Went on a workshop before one of our own para badminton tournaments back in the Netherlands last October, November time. Spent a few days with the shuttle time guys, learning all about their program and how it's been developed in those parts of the world. It's an incredible aim for the BWF. It's a good shot. And why not, Steen, just like you say, you give a player with that kind of talent the opportunity to play, and who knows what can happen. Good shot from... One. And a very strong men's singles uh, team, Hong Kong. Lots of good players coming from Hong Kong. We've got uh, Wong Wing Ki, we've got Nan Wei, we've got Hu Yun, and Yang Ung Kalong. He's actually been uh, sparring a bit in Denmark ahead of these uh, World Championships. And then also, of course, a um, uh, player that I had the pleasure of uh, watching in uh, New Zealand Open, winning his first ever tournament, Lee Chug Yu. So they definitely have a good uh, sparring environment in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, absolutely. Fairly common name for me. I do the circuit really on the Grand Prix gold events and often see one win here. And and Carl Long getting through to the latter stages of those kind of events. Like you say, that strength in depth from ranked number, say, 10 in the world down to, say, number 30. There's a few Hong Kong players in there. Yeah, it's so important that you can challenge each other and put pressure on each other during practice. 
Absolutely. You see the same kind of thing developing in men's singles in India right now as well, with so many yeah. good players getting through to the latter stages of international series, Grand Prix and Super Series, of course. Oh, he's missed. Yeah. And that's exactly what, um, what I was asking for, that he's looking at everything, trying to play as well as he possibly can. Yeah, Ahmed Salah on his knees in defence. Unusually, unusual to see a player at this level well, play with uh, glasses on. We have one from uh, Chinese Taipei, but he's not here at the World Championships, uh, Chen Hong Ling. Yes, Ling, that's right. I've seen him play quite a few Grand Prix gold events, actually. Him and his young partner. His young partner is incredible, 19 years of age. Um, but yes, you don't see many players wearing glasses, particularly just a regular pair of glasses and not some kind of sports glasses or some sort of support or elastic to keep them on. this that he's sort of making uh, when he earn his own points sometimes we see that when you play upwards against uh, better players you feel that you have to play really really close to the line so to the net to score points and that means that you make a lot of mistakes uh, and, and, and you end up uh, perhaps not having played that long rallies as soon as you could have suggest you should play rallies just to play rallies but I, I think he's uh, managed to find a really really good level here um, Salah and uh, he's playing his chance yeah I think you're absolutely right I feel like I did him something of a disservice at the beginning of the match because actually he's taking it to Wong Winky at the moment he's making him play just like you say and it doesn't look out of place out here in the World Championships at all Of course, there's, there's differences in level. Um, we see that in almost all kinds of world championships in different sports. Good shot there. Well, let's see if we can get a few po a few shots in that rally because there's a backhand in here from Salah. Like a cross block, but it was behind him. It had so much skill to keep him on the attack in that rally. I think he's, he's playing really well right now, and I think he's forcing uh, Wong Wing Ki to uh, kick it up a gear. Absolutely, and, and so he should be, because Wong Wing Ki is looking a little bit more relaxed. It looks like, albeit not in the scoreline, but it looks like it's Salah that's controlling quite a lot of these rallies. Yeah, he, he's gotten a bit more used to playing the World Championships, being on TV court here, and uh, he's doing well. Well, that forehand net error from Ahmed Salah does bring about the end of what has been a fantastic opening game for him. Really, that scoreline, 21-15 to one wing key. It has to be well deserved. I mean, the more experienced, the higher level player coming out on top. But hats off to Ahmed Salah from Egypt. 
giving us a very good display of men's singles coming out of Africa nowadays. And let's hope we can see the same in game two. So game one goes to the number 12 seed, ranked 14 in the world, one win here. Not quite into top gear yet, it's fair to say, one win key, but... Ahmed Salah playing a very controlled, very nice style of men's singles. Not afraid of the prospect of playing in the World Championships and against a player that's within the top 15 in the world at the moment. Yeah, good pressure from Wong Wing Key this time, the forehand drive. Yeah, cross court with the layoff and then switched his feet out to that forehand corner. Good shot. It's on the line. Fantastic smash from Salah. And, uh, I totally agree with you, Bobby. Uh, we're not going to see Wong Wing Key's um, top level in, in, in this match here. So I think basically both players are quite satisfied with the first game. Uh, Wong because he won it and, and wasn't threatened and, and Salah because uh, he played a good first game against uh, a very, very good opponent. Three, two. Yeah, I agree and I think it's kind of, it's unfair to call it a mismatch, but this kind of mismatch, it can be a very ugly oh, spectacle three. at times. At least today we're seeing it played in the right sort of style, the right attitude. just keeping on the attack a little more these first few rallies in game two. Good read, good follow-up there by Sully. Oh, perfectly placed backhand from Salah. Three, five. Great net spin from Wong Wing Key. Salah had to wait for that shuttle to stop tumbling before he could play a lift. And, and the, the key for, for, for Wong here in, in this match is to, to um, not get too comfortable so that um, he suddenly have to um, work harder than he expected to. Um, past this first round, so he's, he's got to got to stay in control all the time. Good clear there from uh, the Hong Kong man. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Steen. It's, it is difficult sometimes when you're playing somebody that's you consider to be far below your own standard to try and get that level of commitment right. 
to concentrate enough to stay in front, but not relax too much so that your opponent starts taking advantage. This was that a kind of a loose shot that we won't see in, in uh, matches um, later on in the tournament um, where one needs to play his absolute best to to win the matches. How far do you think uh, Wong Wing Key can go in this tournament, Steve? I mean, he's he's been in some fairly big tournaments recently the Singapore Open quarter-final semi-final in the Malaysian Open picking up his highest amount of ranking points certainly in the last year semi-final I mean quarter-final Denmark Open semi-final in Korea I mean these are Super Series and Super Series premier events yeah it's, it's really hard to predict in my opinion uh, there's a lot of good men's singles um, at the moment um, and, and we sometimes see a very, very fluctuating uh, level of play with the players. It might be due to um, small injuries or uh, the playing conditions, but um, doing well in Singapore and Malaysia um, indicates that he likes to play in drifty conditions. And I don't think they're that drifty here in the Emirates Arena. No, no, we've got uh, some very, very good playing conditions out here again. They set this arena up very well for those Commonwealth Games in 2014. And we've got the same standard of play here today, really. A little bit of drift, maybe, from left to right. And one end of the court, a touch, a few inches perhaps in it, but nothing really to speak of. It doesn't look like it's affecting these players. So far, at least. <laughs> Salah with the thumbs up after he's cleaned his glasses. Well, we've seen Wong Winky step up into perhaps third gear a few times first half of this second game. It's gone wide. It's wide, but what a great technique he's got, the disguise on that sliced forehand. Wow, Wong Wing Key with the loose shot. Good use of the court from Ahmed Salah. Perhaps the footwork with a little bit of work to do, but getting the end result at least, Salah. And taking the attack to Wong Wing Key, that's what I like to see. to keep using the rear two corners, Steen. He doesn't seem to be playing net all that often. No, he, he's playing himself into the arena. He's trying to find the correct length, uh, the correct height, trying to figure out, are there any drifts? Uh, how do I control it? Um, so he, he's, um, he's quite satisfied as well. This is, um, it, it's, it's, it's crucial to have practice time in, uh, in the arena uh, for events like this and, and um, 
the first match where you um, quite quickly can see that you're going to progress to the next round is, is valuable, then you can use it a little bit as, um, as um, familiarization. Yeah, absolutely, a great experience from Wong Wing Key to be treating the match in this sort of level. And his coach, and like you say, just get used to those conditions while he has the opportunity to. No better warm-up to an event than to have the 140th ranked player in the world on the opposite side of the court to you on day one. Give you the chance to get yourself into this tournament. Here we can see how much time he's got at the net there. One wing keep. Six Smash just wide of the singles line. It looks like Ahmed Salah is starting to smash down the line. <laughs> well, smash down the line for one, yes, but uh, I think he's accepted his fate, he's accepted his position, and now he's going for those lines just to try and give himself some hope yeah. of finding a way into this match. We'll see a, th a few good winners, but we'll probably see a couple of errors too. And probably also a little bit tired because this match has been played in, in a pace that for uh, Salah is uh, probably the highest that he's played. Yeah, absolutely, to, to keep this up. He's done well. Yeah. Not, not afraid to uh, attack when the chance is there. Well, that was a very lazy <laughs> shot. That forehand hold was fantastic. He made one when he late on the net, and then he just didn't seem to have anything to follow that up. Oh. Sure. Hold by the umpire. We don't have um, designated uh, umpire on the service line there, the short service line. Linesman, good shot. Yeah, good backhand from Salah. 11-19. Good deception from... Uh, 20, match point 11. And that deceptive forehand brings about match point from the higher ranked Wong Winky, and it's the first time of asking for him. Around the head, cross court drop into the net from Ahmed Salah. He'll be pleased, particularly with that opening game. Certainly has done a lot, a lot more than embarrass himself. He's played a very good standard of badminton, Ahmed Salah but it's Wong Wing Key of Hong Kong that progresses to round two, oh. all smiles <laughs> with a scoreline there of 21, 15, 21, 11. <laughs> so let's take a look at a few of the highlights from that men's singles opening round match and we'll be back shortly with mixed doubles
So day one here at the World Championships, the Emirates Arena here in Glasgow. We are four matches in. We've got mixed doubles action up for you next. A very comfortable win for Wong Winky in the men's singles, but we've got mixed. It's Ronan Labar and Audrey Fontaine from France. They're up against Irfan Fadila and Weni Angraini. So this particular section of the mixed doubles draw, you can see there a win for one of these two. They're going to be facing Tan Kian Meng and Lai Pei Jin of Malaysia, the number eight seeds. Possibly, just possibly, on to a very strong young Chinese pair later on. Wang Yilu and Huang Dong Pi, if matches go their way.